All right, hey 56ers, glad you are here with us today. We're back online. I am still in this room. If you've noticed, this is where I was last week, in this room by myself. And just want you to see it. Just get a 360 of what we're getting back to because September 6th, we will hopefully be back in this room and I will not be by myself. And today I was thinking, you know, we've been playing games and I've been having a hard time coming up with ideas lately. So today our game will be, I'm going to spin in this room and you have to not throw up. Yeah, that's how we'll do it, because it's easy, or until I fall over. So the first person to lose their cookies, uh, they win a prize. Yeah, that's right. No, no, that's not how it's gonna be. Oh boy. Okay, we won't do that. That's a bad idea. Anyhow, I don't think we'll play a game today, but I'm feeling a little bit dizzy now. But I hope we have a good Sunday. And today we're talking about learning how to pray. And what prayer it is, and the thing is about prayer is, is we actually, we're all learning. I, you know, I'm a pastor at Crossroads and I am still learning how to pray. And so we have our, our guys from Orange are going to share a little bit with us. In fact, there's a little guy here who's Australian, and he's going to talk to us about linking up with God. I like a good little accent. And uh, so stay tuned. Pay attention to what he's got to say. I think he's got some good things to talk to us about prayer. So hit it. G'day. My name's Chika. I'm Australian. This is a didgeridoo, and this is how we play. Oh, that playing that thing's intense. You know, in Australia, I had to wait almost three years before I bought my very first didgeridoo. I spent all Christmas money, all birthday money combined into one kitty, saved up to buy my very first didgeridoo. Now, you may have something as well that you're saving for right now. Think about it. The thing that you have been searching for Amazon uh, Prime to be sending for you in two days, but it may take you two years to save up for, so it's sitting in your wish list right now. Think about the thing that you think about before you go to bed, you dream about, then you wake up thinking about, that thing is the thing that I'm speaking about right now. You have been waiting so long, you've been collecting all of your paychecks and putting it towards your kitty, your money, your bling, your coin to buy your item. Then finally, grandma turns up, she shows up big on your birthday with that final $15 and she puts it in your hands and you say, yes! You run straight to the computer, bust it open on Amazon and you click on the picture and eh, something is wrong. It says error. Meh. This link is broken. The link doesn't work. The link is broken and you're not connecting to the item that you've been dying to have. Isn't that just the worst feeling? The worst? Now, we all know how website links are supposed to work. I click the picture, I click the link, and zoom, you go straight to the web page. Now, we all know how website links are supposed to work, but did you know that links have been around a lot longer than that? Think of a chain, a metal series of links. Now, that's actually where the word came from in the first place. The links in the chain connect one piece of metal to the next, and that's exactly what a link is. It's something that connects one thing to something else. All right, gang, we're gonna try something really interesting right now. Show me your chicken wings. All right, with that right now, take this opportunity to link elbows with the person on either side of you. That's right, good job. That's right, link up right now with the person next to you. And do you see? Have a look around the room. Just by locking elbows with every single person next to you, we have created a massive connection, almost a ring or a link or a chain like we talked about with the people just around you. All right. Take this opportunity, unlock your elbows, maybe give them an elbow bump like that. Yeah, we're good, we're good, good job. All right, the chicken farm is over, we've dropped our elbows. <coughs> now let me ask you this, wouldn't it be great if we had a link like this that went straight to God? If we could connect ourselves to Him as easily as we locked, per locked elbows with the person right next to us. I mean, if God is so powerful and if He cares about us and He wants to help us, wouldn't it be nice if we had a link directly straight to Him that we knew would always work? 
Now, if you spend any time at church or know anybody that's ever been to a church, in fact, if you've ever smelled or even seen church in a picture, then you know that we consider prayer to be that link. When we pray or when we talk to God, it's our direct connection to Him. Think about it this way. Every single day we go through our days and sometimes good things happen, sometimes bad things happen, sometimes those things happen in between. And what's the first thing you do when something sensational goes on? Good, bad, in between. What's the first thing you do? You pick up the phone and you text them, you call them to talk about it, you may even message them on social media because they're your best friend and you wish to share your life with them. And that's exactly what it's like when we pray. Prayer links us to God, just like our phone links us to our best friend. Hello, God? When we pray, it's like picking up the phone and calling God. It's our chance to have a direct link to the one who cares about us most. And there's a lot of reasons that we may wish to pray. There's a lot of things in our lives that are good, that are not so good, that we want to connect with God about. You know, sometimes we pray when we realize that we really need His help. Maybe we've studied really, really hard for an important test at school, or we've practiced really, really hard, and we've worked out so hard for that team that we've been wanting to join. And when the day of the test comes, or the day of the tryouts come, you're so, so nervous about you actually making what it is that you've been working towards. So, before you step into what's in front of you, you stop, you take a breath and you ask God, help me do my very, very best. Or maybe you pray when you're feeling lonely. You've tried to make new friends, but that doesn't seem to be working. You've said hello to people, they don't say hello back. Even when you get home, your home, your bedroom, your kitchen doesn't feel like a place where you have real connection with people that live there. So in your loneliness, you pray, God, would you give me a place where I don't feel so alone? Maybe you pray when you're struggling to feel okay about yourself. Maybe you got hurt by somebody mean, Somebody said something to you that was just like, ugh, and you wish that you could talk about it with somebody that would understand. So you pray, hoping God will be that someone. Or maybe you had the best day ever, and you wanna tell somebody about it, you wanna scream so loud because you're so fired up. So you take time on the way back home from school to connect with God and thank Him for the great things that happened on your day. And then there are the prayers we pray when we're desperate when our parents get sick or somebody that we love is hurting and we're going through something really, really difficult in our lives. Those are the times that we hit our knees and we pray that God would help us get through it. Here's some trivia for you. In Australia, we don't go to middle school. That's right, there is no middle school to go to. There's kindy to six and seventh grade to 12th grade, zero middle school because we just have elementary and this is what we call high school. And the transition for me from sixth grade to seventh grade was I got to choose what high school I wanted to go to. Now, when I was growing up, I really loved playing rugby. And if you've never seen rugby before, rugby is kind of like your football, except we don't wear pads and we smack our heads against each other. And when we score a touchdown, the ball goes right on the ground like that. So athletically, I was not gonna have a problem, or at least I didn't think so, but academically, on paper, my math and science grades, no good. And it was really starting to stress me out. I was anxious on the athletic side because of my academic side. So I was taking tutoring, I was studying extra hours, and I was physically, I was tensing up, and I was getting so stressed about it that I needed to release it. And so I leaned in and I said, God, help me, help me with this anxiousness, help me with this stress. Now, I think that we can all relate to this desire to want to connect with God when we really, really need Him. No matter what you believe about God, I think that we have this built-in wiring to pray and try and connect with something bigger and larger than ourselves. But if we're being honest, I mean, we'd sometimes say that prayer feels a little bit like getting somebody's voicemail when we call them. We pray to God, looking for some sort of sign or connection or link to Him, only to walk away feeling exactly the same as when we started. We don't feel better, our circumstances haven't changed, and we find ourselves wondering, is he even listening? When it comes to prayer, sometimes it feels like the link may be broken. Believe it or not, there's an entire book of the Bible that can help us figure out what to do with this feeling. And the book is called the Book of Psalms. It's actually just a massive collection of prayers. Some of them are songs, ha ah! Some of them are written as prayers, mm. And when you read them, it's almost as if they were meant to be website links, like they're all a direct link to God. Now, as you read through Psalms, you'll notice something super interesting. The prayers don't sound churchy. They don't sound like super churchy prayers. They're not full of that perfect language that always talks about how great life is and how amazing God is. In fact, sometimes they're just the opposite. They're honest prayers, full of requests for help, cries for loneliness, jumping around explanations of happiness and victory, and also moments of deep despair. And that's what makes it so great. The Psalms make it obvious to us that God is so interested in all of this stuff. Our deepest frustrations, our fears, our anxieties, our concerns, 
I don't know how to do the emoji faces for all of them, even our private pity parties. Our hidden, our personal praises, all of this stuff God is interested in. Now, while the Psalms were written by a bunch of different people, a guy named King David, he wrote the biggest portion of the book. Now, maybe you've heard about this guy called King David. He was the person that David in the story of David and Goliath, where the slingshot phew, hits the giant in the head to bring him straight to the ground. Yeah, that's the David that we're talking about here. You see, David ended up becoming king of Israel and of the Jewish people. But along the way, just like you and me, he messed up a lot. He made some great choices and some not so great choices. But David stayed passionate about God no matter what. He was honest with God no matter what. And I think because of that, it's super clear that the dude knew how to pray. Let's check out one of the things that David learned about prayer. It's actually a big part of a prayer that David prayed to God. So let's check it out. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Now it's cool that as David was praying to God, he was talking about prayer and he wrote from his own experience. And what David said is this, when we call on God with honest prayers, no matter what we're feeling, God will be near us. And it's almost as if David said, God is close to me when I call out to him and when I'm honest with him. And I think the same is true for us. You see, the point of prayer isn't so much about getting the stuff you want, um, as, as it is expressing honesty with the God who is near and listening. King David understood this, uh, King David experienced this, and he practiced it all the time. He cried out to God in honesty, and because of that, he felt connected to God. Why? Because prayer links you to God. When we speak with God, that's prayer. When we connect with the one who invented us, the one who made the whole world, the one who loves us perfectly, and wants to hear from us, that's creating a link between God and us. Now here's the wild thing. God already knows what you and I are thinking before we ask a word. God already knows what's going on. So there's no need to try and clean up how we feel before we go to God. There's no need to try and hide what you're hurting. There's no need to hide your disappointment or anger because guess what? God already knows it. Prayer isn't really about informing him. Prayer is about being honest with God. So ultimately prayer links you to God connecting us with him and him with us. And our honest prayers will help that link become even stronger. So maybe this week we need to rethink the link. Now, it's totally fine if you wanna ask God for the stuff you need, but maybe this week, instead of only thinking of prayer as a request line, we could also think of it as a direct link to God. And you can start by just talking to him like you would a friend. And how do we do that? We could do it out loud. We could do it in writing. We could do it through worship songs, or maybe even you could talk to him just through your private thoughts. All of these work the same with God. Tell God about your day. You know, tell him about your concerns, about your fears, about what you're excited about, what you're nervous about. Uh, tell God about the things that are stressing you out this week. Whatever you share, just remember that you are making a connection right here with God. And that's the point. You know, what you could also do is you could memorize the verse that we just read, Psalm 145, to help remind you of the way that prayer works. Remember, prayer links us to God. So no matter how you're feeling, you can be honest with God in your prayers. Because as David reminded us, it's honesty that will help connect you to God in prayer. Now you may be thinking, but prayer is just so awkward. I don't know what words to use and where I should be putting my hands and what I should be saying out of my mouth. I get super distracted too when I pray, yes, but don't worry. We're gonna cover all of this next week. In the meantime though, I do encourage you just to start a conversation. Let's start talking to God this week and see what happens. So here's a question I'd love for us to think about as we head out today. What's one thing I could be honest with God about this week? Yeah, this good little accent from this guy. I love an Australian accent. It just makes the speaking so much better, doesn't it? Uh, hey, that's a good place for us to start when we think about prayer. Is we think about what, what one place I can be honest with God. And I think one thing that's tricky is when we say, uh, do you just talk to God like, like you talk to a friend? Well, some of us, we struggle even know how to talk to our friends. So how, where, where will we start when it comes to prayer? And I've been reading a little book that's been helping me learn how to pray. And so there's this little rhythm that I do with prayer. It starts with this. I start with Thanksgiving, thanking God for the good things around me, the things that I take for granted. Then I move on to confession. And confession is where I, I share with God where I'm not measuring up or where I've messed up. And I ask him for forgiveness for those things. And I actually ask him to, to have mercy on me. So for instance, last night, I had a little fight with Julie where I said some things that were a little bit mean. And so I, 
I confess that. I said, Jesus, will you forgive me for my attitude? And obviously I have, I have to go back to Julie and say I'm sorry too. But we, we do that. We confess. That's a, the that's a second thing we pray. And then the third thing we do is we just help. Where do I need God's help today? I, I need God's help in this area or over here. Or I really would like to see God help one of my friends or, or bring someone to know Jesus in my life. And so those rhythms of prayer <clears throat> help me learn how to pray. And that consistency helps me talk to God and creates that link with God. So today what we're going to do is we're going to do our Lectio. And I'm going to get this little passage of scripture. And I just think it's appropriate to think about that psalm that he directed us to. And, and so we're going to go to Psalm 145, and I'm going to read it a couple times. And I want you to just listen like we've been doing, listening to the scripture. Let God speak to you through the scripture. And then we'll do something at the end, okay? Are you ready? Every day, so just notice this, it starts with Thanksgiving. That's cool. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Extol means like lift up your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him. To all who call on him in truth. Let's read that one more time and just and think about it here. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him. To all who call on him in truth. I want you, I'm just going to read it one more time. And I want you to listen to these words. And, and pick up what, what's the repetition. What's, what's being impressed on your mind. The phrase or the word from here. Every day I'll praise you. And extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. I want you to pause the video and I want you to share what's the phrase? What's the phrase that stood out to you? What do you think God maybe is trying to say to you through that? To wrap up our time, I, I want us to walk away with this idea of linking ourselves to the Lord. What's one way we can be honest with God? And I think if we started with that little pattern of being honest with God, with what we're thankful for, confession, where, where maybe we've fallen short and, and asking God for forgiveness, and then moving to where we need God's help, I think that would really link us to God and, and give us good direction in our relationship with God. So why don't we start there, and I uh, hope you have a great week. Look forward to talking about prayer next week, and uh, yeah, see you later.